on a mission to help you find your inner strength, access unlimited possibilities the universe offers, and live a life beyond your dreams, Andrea Thomas, the Sacred Transitions Coach, joins me from Thailand to discuss transitioning with grace through challenging times. I'm Jennifer Regular, the host of Awaken and Ascend, where I get to bring spiritual change makers and healers from around the world to share their wisdom with you so you can become a fuller expression of who you are and create greater meaning and fulfillment. My guest today, Andrea Thomas, takes you through the most needed and sacred transition, moving from scarcity, overthinking, and brain fatigue into the connection with your higher self, from which your unique legacy can fully blossom and build a life by design. She guides people experiencing change, whether they want to move to a new country or place, change their job, start their business, or going through a loss. She helps you activate your power and rewire your brain so you can show up in your life with confidence and clarity. Welcome, Andrea. It is so wonderful to be sharing this space with you and for you to bring a little bit of Thailand to Victoria, BC, Canada. Oh, <laughs> power of zoom to do it <laughs> yes thank you thank you jennifer i'm so so beyond excited to be here and to be part of your mission to share with your audience how to transition with grace through challenging times i'm so excited to to be here with all of you no matter when you are listening guys <laughs> yes it's so true where you're listening when you're listening you're here at the right time. And Andrea, I know you've gone through so many different transitions and changes in your own life. And everything you teach now and talk about and guide people through, you've been through it too. So we're gonna share with the audience a little bit about that, some of those pivotal moments in your life that really lit your path to becoming who you are now and doing what you came here to do. Yes, I would love to. So right now, as Jennifer shared with you, I am in Thailand. I'm traveling the world. I'm living the dream. You can just literally call it. I'm living the dream because I am like every single day. I'm like looking at my life and I'm like, I cannot believe this is the life I'm living right now. Like, it's hard to believe even for me sometimes. <laughs> like, like, am I dreaming or is it real? <laughs> so I'm in a really, really good spot in my life with uh, traveling with how I feel with myself, with with who I am, I feel amazing. And I wish I could say it was always like this, but it was definitely not. And back in 2019, it's when I've experienced one of the biggest transitions in my life. And I remember it was July 22nd when when me and my partner, we found out um, a news that really changed the, the trajectory of our life. He, he was diagnosed with cancer and not just cancer, but it was stage four cancer. So I remember in that moment, the moment we, we found out the, the diagnose, I was like in full denial. I'm like, no, it cannot happen it's not it it's not possible like and probably some of your listeners can relate to when you find like such a shocking news your mind like automatically denies it so that that was me in denial and after the denial I started asking myself okay what what is it that I, I need to do so what I started doing in that moment what I knew best was trying to control trying to control everything that I thought it's in my control. So for example, I started doing lots of research on how I can save him, how I can, how I can heal him, how I can cure him. Like he became my new purpose, my new mission. I, I put my whole life on pause. I paused my business. I paused everything. I didn't work. I didn't do anything. I just put my 110% focus on him because I was on a mission to save him. And what I didn't understood at that time, by, by me trying to control everything, including, oh, what treatment he's going to do, what he's going to eat, what he's not going to eat, and, and so on, what I was actually doing in that time, I was taking his power away because I didn't believe that he is capable of making the best decisions for himself. 
And the reason I was doing that, that I didn't realize at that time, it was because I was afraid of the outcome. I was afraid of actually losing him. And because of that, I was trying to control everything. And after we have done tons of different treatments, even going to Mexico for a month to do a holistic treatment, and we have tried so many different things. Unfortunately, my, my life partner transitioned last year on April 14th on the other side. And that period, while we went through the cancer journey and while we were literally just waiting because we knew like the doctors told us there is no more treatment and then two weeks before he transitioned he he looked at me and he said I I want to tell you something I need to tell you something and I was like what I was like oh my god he has my thought was like he has a secret that he never told me so I was like what what do you want to tell me and he said, I am ready to go. And the moment I heard that, my, like my whole world dropped. Because until that moment, I was keeping the hope. Like that was something that kept both of us going for eight months. Hope. So this, I would say this is the first step to transition through grace. Like keep hope no matter what. And believe that miracles do exist and miracles do happen and even though I so wanted him to be my miracle to be here in the physical plane I know he's not my miracle the way I wanted him to be but he's in a different way my miracle so he's still my miracle, just in a different way than I expected. So I really want to invite you when, when you go through challenging times to really release your expectations, release, release the control on the outcome because you don't have control over that. But what you do have control over it's how you show up. It's how you show up with grace, with gratitude for what is in that very moment. Because what is happening in that moment, it's happening with a purpose. It's happening with a reason. And when you keep that into your energetic field, when you keep that into your awareness that this is happening for me, this is happening for a higher reason, then you are able to move forward and accept this is another step. So you don't resist the present moment, but accept so you can get the lesson, so you can get the gift from that experience in that very moment. Oh, so these are some of the, the few steps um, to really help you transition with grace during challenging times. Oh, and I'd love to see if you have any questions for me, Jennifer. <laughs> yes, that's so beautiful to be able to acknowledge the denial and the controlling and understanding the source of that, the fear, the uncertainty, not wanting to believe it, being in shock, wanting a whole different outcome right and trying to make that happen in some way and you know it's got to be different from what it is right and that's what that's where the resistance comes in that's where we start fighting what's actually happening and when you lean into it and you embrace it and acknowledging that he was on his own path too and he too has the power the healing ability to choose how he's going to experience it as well and the two of you being able to talk about that, to communicate that with each other so that you're actually in the experience together and yet having your own experience within that, each of you. And then the whole idea of transformation is about transcending form. And mm -hmm. although the miracle didn't happen the way you did, like you said, it, it took a different form. And being able to embrace that and acknowledge that and feel now, even though you're in this amazing place in your life, there's still a part of you that's 
kind of missing, right? That's different now. And yeah. it takes a while to learn or to feel differently about that in the way that it's less intense over time that we integrate those changes that, you know, it, it's going to hurt for a while. <laughs> it is, right? And not to suppress that or repress that, but let the tears flow when they come, right? We're like conditioned really not to feel anymore almost, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, in grief, when if, if you're in a so-called regular job, you get like five days for like the closest person to you alive. And if it's a spouse or, you know, a partner, maybe three days a day, you know, distant family, it's yeah. not enough time, is it? To like no. really feel into that. So how can we cultivate that grace when we don't have a whole lot of time sometimes to really feel into anything or, you know, go off to another country to experience life in a whole new way? How do we cultivate that hope and that grace and keep that going to keep that alive? Is there anything you can offer around that? Yes, and what I want to encourage everyone that is listening is to really bring yourself into the present moment. Like be in the moment because the moment the, the reason we suffer so much, the reason we live in in anxiety or in worry, it's because we are either in the past or in the future. But when we are able to bring ourselves into the present moment. And then ask yourself, who do I want to be during this, this challenging time? How do I want to show up? Because that's where you have the power. That's where you have the control. So bring yourself into the present moment. Ask yourself those questions. And then get clear on how do you want to show up? Like, how do you want to lead yourself? Because this is your opportunity to lead yourself, to build the confidence within yourself that you do have the power to overcome anything and everything that comes your way. Because if you wouldn't, you wouldn't have been given those challenges in your life in the first time. So just so you know that the reason you are facing those challenges is because subconsciously or your highest self did ask for them so you can grow so you can go to your next level so you can elevate if not you would have stayed at the same place where you were so now i want you to imagine that you are like one year from now right now if you are experiencing a challenging time just imagine you're one year from now and looking back at this one year just ask yourself like how would i feel proud for showing up during this year? What would I do differently? How would I think? What would I feel? And that's what helped me lead myself. That's what helped me embody the tools that I have been learning for years before I experienced this challenge, all the healing tools, all the coaching tools. I, I was able to apply them on myself so make sure you you have a toolbox of tools that you can utilize in any given moment for when you are about to feel your emotions for when you are triggered for protecting your energy for clearing your energy so make sure you have a toolbox so you can support yourself so you can lead yourself and if you don't have a toolbox yet Go, go outside and get it because there are so many resources. I'm sure Jennifer has lots of resources. I have a lot of resources. Just find the, the mentor, the guy that you resonate with and see what, what toolbox do they have so you can support yourself, but you need to have those resources. I love that, Andrea, about having the toolbox and having the support and recognizing that you will always have everything that you need. And if you're feeling like you don't, then reach out because someone else will be there for you to help you through that and to offer some support, to offer resources, or even just be there to listen. 
And I love the idea of having a toolbox. I like calling it a medicine bundle mm, as well, you it. know, and then <laughs> that special sacred kind of medicine that helps you to heal, to mm. nourish you, to feel good again, to feel yeah. better, to feel better. I love that so much. And I know that you're known as the sacred transitions coach. And those transitions I see too as being a sacred rite of passage in a way. Yes. How would you call the transition sacred or how would you create some sacred space around those transitional times? Yeah, so I really see them as a portal. That's how I see them. Those really challenging times, really challenging transitions. They are like a portal. They are an opportunity to really drop deep within yourself and how you create that sacred space that sacred transition it's really by taking moments throughout your day and just be with yourself and recognizing being aware of like what am I doing how am I showing up like what it's a mirror from the outside what it's mine so really being reflective with yourself during that process but with a lot of love and compassion because it's really hard. Like when we go through those challenging times, it's hard. I mean, when we are in the storm, we're, we are in the storm. But my purpose is to really help you, help those that are experiencing those major challenges to really find the gift and the magic and the lessons while they are in the storm. Because I don't want you to wait like a few months or a few years to see the lessons because that's what it happens the majority of times. No, like even right now, if you just close your eyes and you go back into the past to like a very challenging time, let's say you you lost your job or you got through a breakup or you whatever, whatever it is, like a very challenging pivotal moment in your life, while it happened, you hated it. And you wish you would have ended. And you were probably asking yourself, why is this happening to me? And you know, and you're like in the victim mindset. But then a few months after, or a few years after, depends depends on everyone's uh, awareness and consciousness. You actually look back at that specific event and you're like, oh my God, actually, because I, I got like I I got retired or I got separated from my partner or whatever it is actually because of that now I am able to like live in this place or I'm able to travel or I found my purpose or whatever it is that it led you to that very thing so it's really my my purpose and my mission is to help you find those gifts while you are in the storm and that that takes a lot of a lot of courage for people a lot of like self responsibility to be like okay i have like i have the power and i can hold the power within the process so it's really knowing that you are powerful no matter what's going on in your life I love too how that ties in with you talking about being in the present moment, being right here, right now, and yes. acknowledging what's going on inside and outside of you, that mirror, what sensations you're going through inside, seeing what's being reflected and really cultivating that self-awareness. And being in that present moment really is a gift in itself, the present moment. Yes. <laughs> also, though, that's where our power is, isn't it? That's our only yes. source of power is in the present moment, not in the past, definitely not in the future. It's here, right here in the present moment. And we can project our vision out into the future, connecting with our future self or even our past self. How did we get through all that before? You know, we might have been through this mm -hmm. in some way. And noticing what good lies ahead as well and how, you know, looking backwards, what would we tell, what would our future self tell our current self and how would we get there and how do we want to feel and being able to embrace all of that and really have the capacity to hold it all you know the joy and the 
the pains and the anger and the judgment and the control and the surrender. I mean, we get to play with all of those different ways of being. That's what the whole human experience is about. It's how our soul evolves when we can embrace that, transform that, grow from that and learn from that. And it really helps to have that toolbox, that medicine bundle, a coach, a guide to help you along the way. And I know there's something that you're actually offering the audience today, Andrea. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yes, I would like to offer my uh, workbook, which is three steps to activate your personal power. And I'm sharing in that three main tools that I have used throughout my really challenging times with my my partner that I've used like almost on a daily basis honestly and they help me like surpass and show up with grace lead myself during those challenging times and now looking back at the way I showed up having no regrets And I think that's huge to be able to say that, wow, while I was going through the most challenging time in my life, I showed up as my best self in that moment. And I have no regrets by the way I showed up. So that's what these tools are going to do for you. Amazing. And definitely we're going to have the link for you in the show notes as we always do and ways to connect with Andrea as well. And, you know, soul care is something that's really near and dear to my heart. So as you're talking about that, I was thinking, yeah, I can share that with the audience as well. So we'll have that link in the show notes too. And if you're wanting to work with Andrea, how would we get a hold of you, my dear? <laughs> yes, mainly I'm spending my uh, my time on uh, Instagram. So you can find me. It's a sacred underline rebel. Underline rebel. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) Fantastic. So, of course, we'll have that link on there, too. Andrea, it's been such a pleasure to hear about your strength and your vulnerability and all the tools that have helped you through these sacred transitions. Is there anything else that you would like to share? Yes, I, I think how I would like to tie this beautiful conversation up. It's really for each and every listener to to know that we came here on earth, our soul chose to come here on earth to experience all of it, to experience the up and down, to experience the duality of life. That's why we came. And if we wouldn't have the duality, we wouldn't be able to to know the difference between the joy and the sadness. And they are not good or bad they are just different and beautiful in their own way so when we start accepting all the emotions all life with what it comes with the ups and downs with the duality with the ebb and flow with the masculine and feminine i feel like that's when we are fully able to experience the magic of life and that's when the synchronicities start to happen and things come together and you are in the flow and you are co-creating with the universe yes 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 (laughs) (laughs) it all becomes more fluid there's such fluidity and you know as we're moving our hands it's like it's a dance it's a wave you know and it really is flow and grace and everything with grace and ease yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's it was such a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you to each and every one of you for listening and for taking this precious time for yourself. Absolutely. She just said it, so I won't say it again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everyone that's been tuning in. We'll see you again next time on Awaken and Ascend. Thank you.